friend who lives in Vancouver, BC, and she's one of your biggest fans in the world. I told her this morning that I was going to have the honor, perhaps, to ask you a question. So I emailed her and she responded. The question is, what is one way? There isn't this. So here's a question. What is one way that we, in the Western world, can help raise awareness and inspire action to reduce the demand for bush meat and to increase protection of crit critical chimp habitat? Well, I think we address that in the film very well. We're doing what we can with bush meat with other NGOs. And it's all a question of raising awareness. That's why those little plays are so important. And what we didn't have time to talk about was in this Nagufu refugee camp. A 15-year-old boy became a member of Roots and Shoots. In fact, he started it in his school. And his uncle was a, a hunter. And this boy kept persuading his uncle and saying, you know, you should try chicken farming, it's illegal, you shouldn't be killing these animals, soon there won't be any left, because he loved this in Roots and Shoots. And, and his uncle, huh, me, chickens, huh. But after a bit, he, well, he bought some chickens, and he found that he made a lot more money with chickens, and it was easy <laughs> compared to hunting. <laughs> and in two years, that boy and his uncle changed 75 hunters into chicken farmers. So if we had the funding to, to get this kind of program going right throughout these countries where there's bush meat, bush meat trade, but you know, we're a tiny organization. We are making headway working with some of the other NGOs on the ground, but this is just a lot of work. But it works if you can do it. We need lots of little golden circles <laughs> in, in those areas. We're working at it. How do you deal with people like this? We find them all the time. And so for me, the most important thing is, you know, you've got to get to the heart. You can't argue with them. It doesn't go in here. And as soon as you start arguing, they argue back, and, and they don't listen at all. So I find that stories is the way to go, to get in here. Yeah. But since that film was made, you saw that one first uh, community garden on the Kyle Housing Estate in Pine Ridge Reservation. Well, there are now 13 of those gardens. They're bigger. They've got, all of them have an extra section added for native plants. And what's happened is that the elders are, uh, are so excited and they're coming and teaching the children about the uses of those plants for food or medicine. And a connection is being once again built up between the young and, and the old on the reservation. We've got uh, Patricia and Jason got roots and shoots into, I think it's nine of the schools, and two uh, young people have even gone to university. Uh, you know, roots and shoots is now spreading into other reservations and throughout the First Nation people in Canada as well. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. The, the kind of projects they're doing, uh, they're doing a lot of planting of trees, they're doing gardens in their schools, they're volunteering to help in animal shelters, they're raising money for the homeless, they're raising money for the victims of the tsunami in Japan. Um, can you think of any more, Mary? She's outside, I think. <laughs> And they, they, they meet and talk, it's their, their thing. So they sit with their peers and they talk about what the problems are. Some kids are going to want to help dogs, and some are going to want to help cougars, and some are going to want to help people, and some are going to want to clean up the environment. So there's always some who could join in the different project with real passion because it's what they care about and it's what they've chosen. That's how it works. Your beautiful medallion. mentioning the cat driver and how you can't really discuss something with someone this way. You need to get to the heart. Is that what that's all about? This? Well, this was given to me by a young woman after a lecture. You know, there's sometimes tears. And she took it off her neck. She said her grandmother had left it to her. The grandmother emigrated from Russia. 
And then she was gone. I didn't even know her name. She was very emotional. And um, I just, I like it a lot. And many people comment on it. So I just, it's almost like a piece of uniform. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody noticed when I was wearing this shawl? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Somebody said to me this morning, I was interviewed by a little group that came over from South Korea, of young women. And they said to me, um, you know, do you do you think about clothes? And I said, well, no, not really. I don't actually have time. Do you like shopping? And I said, no, I haven't got time for shopping, and I hate shopping. And um, sometimes some of my own staff will say, but Jane, you were wearing that three years ago. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> your stories about families, and my grandchildren love your stories about the, the chimpanzees. When you, do you go back? I understand you go back every year. I go back twice a year. Uh, most of the old timers are gone. I mean, all, of the, all of the ones I knew so well in the early 60s and 70s, they're gone. You know, they can live to be 60, even 70 in captivity in the wild, 50 is pretty old. The, the uh, offspring of those original ones, they're still there. Those are the Frodo's and the Gremlins that I know so well. Of course, who know me so well as well. And um, so the team continues to do the research at Gombe. I get reports very often. I had a report actually yesterday, a very disturbing report about Gremlin having got separated from her two-year-old son and that they need milk at that age. And the uh, research staff, the Tanzanians, were really worried and they, by accident, found the, the infant was left by himself in one of the valleys, and his mother was a valley away, and they didn't quite know what to do, you know, should they do anything about it? But luckily, one of the guys said, well, I think we should try and take Gremlin. Perhaps you'll follow some bits of banana. We don't feed them bananas anymore, but she remembers. <laughs> and uh, she wasn't really wanting to come. There was lots of food. And then the people with little gizmo, he started crying for his mother, and somebody had the idea of putting on their walkie-talkie. And so his mother then heard the cries, and she then went and followed, and they were reunited this morning. So that's part of <laughs> I feel this change. Well, I said in the film, I do feel a change. There are more people who are aware, especially among the youth. So we have our youth leadership program, we have young people, who go out to the schools and start roots and shoots. We have a fellow every year. We, we select somebody who actually works for JGI and goes particularly into the universities and encourages, supports, starts roots and shoots groups. So it's my big hope for the future, is the youth. Thanks, Thank you very much.